One final question on the show today. It's from Chet in Fayetteville. As a self-employed single-member LLC, what are the best available options for me to retire? I have a Roth IRA I maximize. What are more available options? You know, I think the first thing that jumps out at me in reading that question, when you say, what are the best available options for me to retire, I would assess whether you've got some value in your business, right? Yeah. Because that could be the best. Uh, yeah. If, if you're going to plan to sell it and you have a, a, a path for that, but a lot of times with a self-employed single member LLC, they are the business. It, right. And I, I'll say as a business owner, uh, the value of the business is part of my retirement plan. But in addition to that, I am doing a you know more traditional retirement plan at Gen Wealth because we're not a single member LLC because we have multiple team members here. We have established a simple IRA and that's a, basically a small business version of a 401k. So that's what I have to supplement the value of my business as a business owner as far as my retirement income is, is planned, it is concerned, rather. Um, one of the things we want to talk with you about, Chet, is a SEP IRA. And before I get into the details of that, I want to mention something on the SEP IRA and on the Simple IRA. Scott, we have had people in the past who say when we mention something that has IRA in the name of it, they will go, okay, but wait a minute, stop. I'm already doing a Roth IRA. So I don't think that I can do that as well. So which one should I do? I need you to understand that when we're talking about a SEP IRA or a simple IRA, even though it has IRA in the name of it, these are corporate retirement plans. So it is just like doing a 401k and a Roth or a 401k and a traditional IRA. It does not matter that it has IRA in the name of it. You're able to do, in this case, a SEP IRA and a Roth IRA simultaneously. So, Scott, you want to talk a little bit about the SEP? Yeah, the SEP is is probably, of everything we're going to talk about, the easiest and quickest to establish. So when he talked about best available options, it's definitely the quickest to access. You can set it up, and all you have to do is file, uh, or actually, you don't even have to file it. You just have to fill out and keep, uh, well, you file it with you. You don't have to actually turn it into the IRS, but you, you file a form uh, that says, I'm going to create a SEP IRA, and you've got it. And then you open the account somewhere, and it's self-directed. You can contribute up to 25% of your income annually. It is considered pre-tax. Now, I say when you contribute it, it is actually an employer contribution. So keep that in mind. The 25% of your employee income, so if you're employer and employee, you're getting 25% of your income put in by the employer side of your business. The cap there is $69,000. So it's 25% of your income up to $69,000. And then on the employer side, it helps both sides of the taxation equation, right? Because the employee is making a pre-tax contribution. The employer is making it for them. When withdrawals are made in retirement, they'll be taxed at ordinary income. Now, the key here, though, is because Janet mentioned the simple, which is what we have here at GenWealth, that's for multiple employees. The SEP would not be terribly advantageous to you if you had multiple employees right. because you have whatever you do for you, you have to do for everybody. So he, he does mention he's self-employed and a single member LLC might be a good option for him. So I'll go ahead and chase this rabbit for a minute for other people who are out there listening. Um, if it, it, some, sometimes we will see a husband and wife who own a company together mm -hmm. and they are both employees of that. So I don't want you to get focused on just like in Chet's case, he is a single member LLC, but if you've got a husband and wife and and you're contributing for a retirement plan for both of those, a SEP is still a good plan because you're going to contribute the same amount for both of them. And it's not like you resent contributing to, I mean, this is for your joint retirement in the future. Right. Now, if you have people who are not family members or people who haven't been with the company very long, that's where a lot of people start as employers start getting uncomfortable with the SEP. It's like, well, I'm going to contribute, let's say 25% to mine, but this person Person just started, you know, last week, and I don't know if they're going to make it or not. You know, I, I don't r really want to add that expense. So that's where a lot of people will kind of draw the line in the sand. But think about who they are. The other key on this is many uh, business owners, especially in a single uh, owner LLC, many people will pay themselves more in terms of a distribution yeah. than in terms of true W-2 income. This is going to be based off of your W-2 income. Mm -hmm. So consider that as you make this decision. 
Another option would be a solo 401k. Now, these are not as easy and quick to establish as the SEP IRA. There's a lot more reporting that goes on here. Uh, there's a lot more to establish it, but the contribution limits could be higher depending, again, on your income because the solo 401k is just like any other 401k. You've got uh, up to $23,000 a year that you can contribute if you're under 50. And if you're 50 or over, as we already talked about earlier in the show, that limit increases with the catch-up contribution to 30500 It allows for employee and employer contributions. So that's a key difference from the SEP. The total here cannot exceed $69,000. And it does, as we've already alluded to, require third-party reporting and probably more fees associated with that plan because you're setting up a 401k it may just be for you but you're setting up a 401k you can save on taxes and can defer up to 100 percent of your income and still get a match so you get both sides of that equation in the solo 401k anything else to add on that one I think we're good on that. We'll go ahead and talk about a defined benefit plan okay. a little bit. Um, so if you think about defined contribution versus defined benefit. So uh, we throw those terms around a lot, but I think a, l- a lot of people who aren't in the industry hear them and don't really focus on what, what the difference is. So the defined contribution, we've talked about like on the 401k, Scott mentioned the limits that you can contribute. So the contribution is defined by the IRS. They say you can't contribute more than 23,000 unless you're 50 or older, then it's 30,500. So that's what they have clearly defined. In the defined benefit, this is like a pension. So we're not saying here's what you can put into it, but we are saying here's what you're going to get out of it. So it's a different approach to funding this. There are a lot of, uh, of high income earners that would benefit from this tremendously in yeah. terms of the discount that they would get on taxes. Yeah, generally speaking, you can get a lot more into that yeah. plan than you can going these other routes. So if that's something you're interested in exploring, Chet, or anybody else who heard that on the show today, give us a call. 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526 to find out more and to get started with your plan for true financial independence. 